the Arbok line, normal typing. While totally subjective on what is considered normal, if Game Freak really wanted to, the Arbok line could have been the original poison and normal combination before the Schrudel line in Generation 9. Considering their designs and sprites, categories, their name etymologies in every language within the games, and from what appearances they've had in the anime, they make it very clear that it takes inspiration from various snakes and cobras, such as rattlesnakes and Indian cobras which are well-known types of snakes across the world enough to consider them normal land animals. And with how simple the majority of Pokemon designs were back in the, this generation, it would make sense that they would have rather simple inspirations that similarly would be reflected in other Pokemon such as Deerling, Starly, and Litleo in the same way. From what is described about them in the Pokedex, they even behave akin to their real-life counterparts, with Ekans preying on Pidgey and Sparrow eggs, and how Arbok intimidates its opponents with its belly pattern. The Cantonian Sandslash line, normal typing. Similar to the Arbok line, the Sandslash line could very well pull off the normal typing just fine, if not for the necessary regional and or type balancing at the time. With how closely it behaves and appears to its real life inspirations, which in this case, judging by its Pokemon category, name etymology, and designs, may stem from pangolins, moles, mouses, weasels, badgers, and armadillos, among others, which are all in fact normal animals for these Pokemon to be inspired from, which again fit the simplistic homages to real world animals for a fair amount of Pokemon in the first generation. Their dex entries exemplifies this further by describing numerous times how both like to roll up into a ball for protection, mobility, or offensive power similar to the armadillo, and what little appearances they had in the anime expresses this even further, as well as the way they move in the games too. The Sandslash line really could have been the original Diggersby before its arrival. Cantonian Ninetales, Psychic Typing as apparent by its design, Ninetales is likely based off the Kitsune, or QB, judging by its name etymologies. And a recurring point within that legend in Japanese mythology is how they supposedly possess paranormal, supernatural, or magical powers, which stems from their alleged high intellect. Something that Ninetales is noted of possessing, and something that is seldom linked to psychic type Pokemon like Alakazam and the Lottie Twins for their wiseness. It also helps that its superior offensive stat is its special attack, just like the majority of psychic type Pokemon, its Pokedex entries from the main series games, anime, and even new Pokemon Snap all but echo the same sentiment as, as well, especially the mentions of inflicting curses, mystic powers, and even being able to understand the human language, all of which is credited to its high intelligence. Not to mention the plethora amounts of psychic type moves it can already learn, all of which links back to those mythological creatures. The Golduck line, psychic typing. People who watched the anime way back in the first generation would definitely remember how Misty constantly mentioned her Psyduck exerting uncontrollable psychic powers on multiple occasions. The Pokedex entries from both the games and anime would express how Psyduck would use psychokinetic, odd, mystical, mysterious, enigmatic, or blatantly psychic powers when its brain cells are active. Even its name etymology in English and French contains the word psychic, while simultaneously Golduck has mentions of its telekinetic and or psychic powers from its forehead being brought out as a result of swimming at high speeds and active brain cells. Its psychic powers supposedly being under control may be a result of its evolution into Golduck. The Adventures manga even displays its psychic abilities even further with a particular moment showing a Golduck displaying the ability to telepathically share its knowledge with humans. Besides normal type moves, it can even learn a good majority of psychic type moves already, including Wonder Room that is learned mostly by psychic type Pokemon. It probably also helps that its highest stat is its special attack, just like the majority of psychic types. Also, as a characteristic of the first generation, and arguably still to this day, gold is historically synonymous with psychic powers, which can be seen in Psyduck and Golduck's yellow colorations in their official designs, and this is shared with the other Gen 1 psychic types such as the Drowsy Line and the Abra Line. Even Golduck's name in English and German contains the word gold. 
the primate line, normal typing. To start with, it is made very apparent by their official designs, Pokemon category, and name etymologies that they are partially inspired by primates. Monkeys, pigs, apes, and in primates case, references to boxes which are all linked to something considered mundane in our world. Even their Pokedex entries and depictions in the anime highlight their connections and behaviors to real-world baboons, with their tendencies to fly into a raid spontaneously in particular live in tropical tree trop colonies, and fondness of bananas. This would also not contradict with its evolution into Annihilate and instead make it more consistent as it could be perceived as a normal, alive primate transcending into the ghost type Annihilate as a result of its rage. Which mind you, is something that has been done before, an example being Fletching into Fletchender, losing the normal typing and instead gains the fire typing. The Cantonian Rapidash line, normal typing. As is the case with the previous ones, it's made apparent from their official design and their Pokemon category that they very closely resemble and are likely based off typical horses or ponies with ponytail, something that is also mentioned in their name etymologies in Korean and Chinese too. Their dex entries also illustrate a mirroring reflection of horse behavior with ponytail gaining stronger legs and growing out of its mane and tail after merely an hour, which parallels how wild small ponies have to quickly adapt to their environment and flee from natural predators. And as for Rapidash, it parallels how a horse likes to gallop in open fields at high speeds and compete against each other for dominance, something that was also shown in the anime too. Seal, Ice Typing Its origins are clearly based around Arctic Ocean seals, harp seal pups, and sea lions as indicated by its category, official design, and name etymology. There's also the plethora amount of ice type moves it can learn naturally that stem from it. And let's not forget what the deck says about it, with how it loves freezing cold conditions, frigid climates, ice covered seas, and lives on icebergs. Speaking of living, it even typically inhabits cold and or arctic environments such as seafoam islands, icefall cave, Icy Cave, Glacial Cavern, and if we're counting side series games, there's also Mount Freeze and Frozen Tundra to name a few. And while on the subject of the seal line, I would like to mention that while the ice type is more fitting for it, there's also an argument for it, and Dugong as well, to be part normal type, which simply stems from the official designs, category, name etymology, dex entries, and anime appearances expressing how it clearly behaves and or resembles but also imitates our real-world sea lions, seals, and dugongs, all of which are considered normal animals and an evolution line and I would retroactive put in my third typing series. So just consider this as an oversight, though may not be the only one. The Hypno Line, Dark Typing. Now I'm just saying, if their sinister looks in their official designs don't make it obvious, the Pokedex goes so far as to label Hypno as a quote, dangerous Pokemon, and for good reason. It steals the good dreams of others, it puts humans to sleep when it's hungry, and let's not forget the infamous incident of it kidnapping a child, something that was clearly depicted in Fire Red and Leaf Green, remind you, and for the record was mentioned as far back as the Pokemon Encyclopedia with Hypno stealing children. Just gonna put that one out there. For Drowsy, it's not as extreme, but there are mentions of it stealing away good and juicy dreams of others that mostly come from children, as an example, and this type of behavior may be because of its inspiration from the Baku, a dream-eating spirit from Japanese mythology that is said to devour a child's nightmares, and if they didn't have a talisman or supposedly if hungry enough, would willingly devour their hopes and desires thus leading to an empty life. This could also explain why both can learn a decent amount of dark time moves already, too. The King line, normal typing. Okay, I promise this is the last normal typing for this gen. Anyways, their simplistic designs clearly suggest a reference to crabs, you know, a mundane marine animal. This goes so far as their name etymologies and crabby's category blatantly contain the word crab or king crab for kingler. Their dex entries even express how they imitate real-world crabs at least, with Krabby being able to grow back its pincers, 
living in burrows or sandy beaches and making bubbles at their mouths to intimidate foes and to prevent dehydration most likely. The kindling could also have been the first water and normal type before burial, to be honest. Cantonian Marowak, dark typing. This is one of those where the more I looked into it, the more it made sense for me for this typing, as for starters, its French name etymology in particular contains the word killer to describe it, and while it seems to not be particularly inspired by anything quote, evil, this may be in reference to its lore in the Pokedex where it describes it as a vicious, rough, more aggressive and savage Pokemon having a ferocious and violent temperament as a result of using bones as weapons, which the Pokemon anime reports as it having impressive offensive strength. In fact, even the Relic Pokemon Encyclopedia book mentions Marowak as becoming more violent from using bones. This behavior is even portrayed in the Pokemon Adventures manga, where it, alongside a Rhydon and Graveler, attacked two of Blue's fangirls. And in addition, it also learns a fair amount of dark time moves already, so overall I believe it could pull this off quite naturally actually. Horsey and Seedra, Dragon Typing While the idea of Horsey and Seedra being a dragon type disconnects with the inspirations of the Tatsuno Oshigo from mainly Eastern Legends where just like its gradual evolution into a dragon, a seahorse after leaving for a thousand years becomes a dragon, it is worth mentioning how they by themselves may have dragon-like qualities even before becoming Kingdra. As both are part of the Dragon Egg Group, a group that contains Pokemon who are considered dragons in various cultures as I mentioned before, their Pokemon category literally contain the word for dragon when describing them, considering that Seedra is the evolution of Horsey, a little baby seahorse, it could be interpreted that Seedra is in the transitional period going from a seahorse into a sea dragon. And Seedra and Horsey's names in Japanese, English, Korean, and Chinese contains the words dragon or sea dragon in them derived from the term for seahorse, Tatsu no Oshigo, literally translated to dragon's child, but also the fact that they can be caught with a dragon scale might imply that the scales they have are draconic like in nature. And this is despite the fact that for the longest time, it has been able to learn an abundance of dragon type moves already. Pinsir, fighting typing. I will say that if Pinsir was still a counterpart to Scyther, like it was before generation two, then, then I would be less inclined to suggest this type. Although, with it now being firmly established to be a counterpart to Heracross across multiple games, the similarities are remarkable. Most notably, with what Pinsir is based on, which is similar to Heracross being based on insects used for insect fighting, Heracross likely a Japanese rhinoceros beetle, and Pinsir likely a stag beetle. Even its name etymology in Japanese contains the word for sheer and brawny, referring to its strong muscular strength. So nowadays, it does seem a bit jarring when two Pokemon have inspirations that parallel and yet have different assigned types. And just like Heracross, Pinsir's dex entries consistently refers to how strong, tough, and powerful it is, like how it can split apart large trees with no problem, or grip foes that are twice its weight, and would line up with its stat distribution having the attack stat be its most prominent one. And all this could explain why it can learn a surprisingly large amount of fighting type moves like superpower and close combat. The Porygon line, electric typing. Looking through this evolutionary line, it's actually surprising how many connotations it has with electricity. It's mentioned how it's likely had inspirations from computer software, 3D computer graphics, software versioning, and computer viruses as its evolution progresses, and even the Pokedex Encyclopedia state how it is a man-made Pokemon created by the latest state-of-the-art technology by Silvsco, all of which are supported with the power of electricity in order to perform such tasks or you could describe as electronic technology. And let's not forget their numerous deck entries describing their bodies being made out of programming code or digital data being created from computer programming and having access to cyberspace or electronic space, which was shown in a certain anime episode. With Porygon's later evolutions being software upgrades to its current capabilities, 
with the addition of artificial intelligence, which is electronic in nature of course, all in the form of the upgrade item and a dubious disc which funny enough is referred to as the dubious patch which again tie back into computer software patches or updates. All this may explain why they also have access to a great amount of electric type moves already, even now, second to normal type ones. Dratini, water typing. Going as far back as 1996, the Pokemon Encyclopedia states that a Dratini was first found in a park pond in the Safari Zone, which is complete confirmation that while Dratini inhabit water, which is only further shown in future game installments like Route 45, Dragon's Den, Pond, Blue's Lake, Sparkling Sea, Balamir Lake, and many more, especially if we include side series games. Within its deck entries, both in the games and anime, it mentions how Dratini lives underwater, on the floor of bodies of water, or near waterfalls, which like Porygon was shown in a certain banned episode. The Avengers manga even notes this exact detail too. This may all stem from its suggested inspirations on sea serpents or Ryu from traditional Japanese and or Chinese dragons that also typically inhabit the sea or aquatic locations. Which, considering what it later evolves into, is likely the case and could also explain its assigned egg group into the Water 1 egg group, a group of Pokemon that live both on land and in water. No wonder why I can already learn a decent amount of water time moves to this day. It all adds up. <laughs>